Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you feature toggling in React and doing it at runtime. So let's get into it. Now this doesn't have to be React specific, it's just that I'm using React for reasons, if you will. But feature toggling is basically the idea that you have a set of features and then you have multiple customers who want different features depending on what what their needs are. Now this is very co common for multi-market applications or applications where you have multiple users or multiple customers buying your product from you and you need to maintain maybe two or three different companies uh, strat like application in the same code base and you want to be able to switch on and like switch features on and off. So I'm going to show you three different approaches that I like to use depending on a little bit like what the preferences of the projects is and so forth to kind of achieve this and uh, yeah let's take it from there. Now so what we defined first and foremost was what is a feature toggle? A feature toggle is just some way for you to say that all right if I have a if I have an application and I'm in, I'm showing my application to a user in America or my this company, company A, they should have these features. And if I'm showing it to company B or some other type of user, they are going to have those features. That's basically what it is. So why would we want to have this at runtime? Well, one of the things that you need to consider is that when you have things at runtime is that, that basically means that all the code is in one code base. I made a previous video where I showed you how to slice up things at build time. In other words, you would build multiple files so that although you had one code base, you produced several different bundles and in basically just containing the code that is necessary in order to show the application that one specific type of user or consumer wants. But in this scenario, we're going to have all the code in one big bundle and then just switch it at runtime. In other words, when the application starts. Now, the benefits of this is that it requires less time like when you have big projects and let's say that you have seven different customers if you have the other approach where you do it at build time it might take you a while to compile and build all of these things and there there are like there are a few drawbacks with that the benefit is of course that the bundle itself like the total size of the application you send to your user is going to be much smaller the, the and that's the problem here that now you're se if you have one customer who has a lot of application features and one customer who only uses a few of them they are still going to get the same size of bundle and that's not ideal but it's also a, like it's easier for you to maintain this sort of architecture it's le there's less t build time involved right so what I wanted to show you here is three different approaches that I use in order to kind of avoid the messy code that kind of comes with this and rather the, like the approaches that I think are like I've used before that I find to be fairly useful. So let's get into our configuration first and foremost. So we have we are using Webpack of course and we have three different entry points for three different versions that I'll show you and when we just produce our bundles these are the bundles that you see here. And then we are using Webpack 4, so we are in the development mode. And then we have this little transpiler step here where Babel basically just loads, or rather we use the Babel loader, and we have Babel pre presets for React. That's basically it, as small as possible. This is my little dependency file for all that good stuff. So let's have a look at... Do, 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 do. Or version one. So in version one, I kind of have the approach where, all right, so I need to at runtime express what environment I'm in. And what I like to do there is to have something like this. I have some type of global variable that declares where I am, or rather in which context the application is running. Now this is just hard coded, but you could grab this from the URL. There's multiple ways that you can figure out where you are. In other words, in this scenario, I see that the application is now running in America, but I could also just say that it's going to run in Sweden or whatever. I just, it's just an arbitrary value that we can use then in the code to determine where we are. So this approach is a little bit upfront about the dependencies that we have. So what I have done here is that I've created two different functions, one component and one feature, uh, one function that I call toggle. We'll look at that in just a moment. So we have two different functions here. So in if we are running in Sweden, we want to see the Swedish 
functionality and in America we want the American uh, functionality. So what I will do is that I will declare depending on which feature that is going to be enabled, I will declare different, like a, basically just an object that has the namespace that my environmental variable is referencing and then the value will simply be the functionality that I'm looking for. That way I can actually ma maintain in a very efficient manner multiple versions of the same functionality or the same function that have different behaviors. Now remember, in a perfect world people, we just want one application. You should always know that this st stuff is such a hassle to deal with over time. Ideally, you want everybody to use the same functionality, it should be the same for everybody, but when you can't do that, this is a nice way of doing it, where you simply have all the deviations in some type of structure, so you can kind of grab the structure, that, you, like the thing that you want. This is... Um, it's not a factory pattern, but it's very similar to a factory pattern. And then we have two different applications here. We have the Swedish application and we have the American application. As you can see here, the behavior of them is fairly straightforward. They're basically the same thing, but they have, yeah, they're basically the same application, right? But if we now look here, so we see that the American application ha is now in a component structure, and you see this is the same pattern here. Like in React, you may, may or may not know this, but this JSX syntax, it's just syntactic sugar on top of a, what is virtually a function. So we can follow the same pattern. We simply declare up front a list of all the different variations of this component or this application that we have, and then we simply add a namespace for each one so we know which one is referencing what. So here we see that the country is America, and here the country is Sweden, and now we have this toggle function that takes in the function object, or the functions object, and we'll look at that in just a moment. And then finally we just have this render function that has a toggle that can out, that takes in the components as an input. So if we look at the toggle, so if we look at the toggle function, now first and foremost what we have to remember here is that feature toggling means that you have, you, you, like ideally you just want the same function for everybody and you just want to switch it on and off. But in my experience it's very rare that things stay that simple. All it takes is for one of your sales um, co-workers to promise one customer a small deviation in their functionality and you're here. You're like immediately this switching on and off is just a dream. I have never to this day ever ever worked in a project where it was that simple because it always starts out that way. Everybody says that oh yeah it's always going to be the same where you just want to be able to switch on and off. Yeah sure great before you know it you have a switch statement or like some massive diff like construct construct where you have all these deviations and all these um, if else's in your code and it's just a hassle so that's why i kind of try to be a little bit preemptive in this approach and just say that all right i have this function that takes in a toggle function that takes in a functions object and it does some basic validation here as you can see and it just and then it basically does a type check for making sure that there is actually a function declared and then finally all it does is that it returns that function, it call, rather it calls that function. That's all it does. Like you can make many different uh, implementations of this but basically that's all the toggle function does. It has a notion of where it is and it will simply call the correct function as needed. That's basically it. And the same thing goes for the component, the toggle component, which is just a React component that takes in this, like takes in the props and grabs the components. And then all it does is that it just extracts the component that has the namespace that we declared in our global variable, and otherwise it just returns the default component. It gets that component, just validates it, and then it returns it. So what's now happening is that if I switch this little environmental variable, whenever I do that, it's going to simply have the correct behavior. So if I am in America, it's going to grab the American function, and it's going to grab the American component. And this way it it kind of stays clean, like you're up front, you can read all the code and you can kind of see like at a glance that okay these are the different variations and you can, uh, to me this is fairly understandable. This is just my personal take on matters of course. Anywho, let's move on to version 2. So in version 2 we have the more traditional feature toggle, this is the thing that most feature toggling applications will have some version of. 
And basically, you either have an environmental variable, as I showed you earlier, but I wanted to show, go one further and show you how like, we do it at my company and I have how I see other companies do it as well, where you have this configuration function or this object, if you will. And if we look at just, let's just store that there. If we look at this config function, all it is, it's just a flat list of different configurations with a name of some sort. And then it has different feature toggles. So it has like headers enabled, subheaders enabled. Like basically, you're just you just have a massive object of configuration settings that you send to the to the client, and then you have this function that basically just walks through this list and finds the environment, like the configuration for the environment you're looking for. Otherwise, it's just going to return the default, which is going to be the first one in this scenario. So if we look at this, we can see here that all right, I have set the configuration to SE, but I didn't have a, I don't have any of that, so it's going to be the default one. And basically, what we now have is this application here, where we will conditionally render different components in our React tree depending on if we're on or off. Now, this is a kind of binary thing. This means that all right, each every single customer that I have. Are going to is going to have to have the same implementation or they have the same implementation of my feature so it does like if the Americans are going to see this component and the Swedes are going to see this component both of them are going to see the same component it's just that the decision is is it going to be on or off that's the, 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 that's the difference in this scenario you have one more dimension where you can decide who is going to see the component. I mean, if I wanted the Americans to see the same thing as the Swedes, I would simply reuse the same application component to the and map it to the same namespace. But I also have the option of making a completely custom component. I don't have that option here because it's a Boolean value. In other words, it can be on or off. I can't just switch and make it a custom thing, right? So this is traditionally how a feature toggle works, on or off. So we can see a config headers enabled. If it's on, the header is going to be shown. Otherwise, it's not going to be there. And the same thing goes here. Fairly straightforward, I hope. And then lastly, I'll show you one final thing, which is very similar to the thing that I showed you in the last application, like the one that I showed you when you can do this sort of thing at build time instead. So instead of having everything at runtime, you can do it at build time. And here we have a very similar approach where, all right, you set some type of environmental variable that declares, okay, where are you? Who are you? Or oh, rather, in what environment are you running? And then we require our application, and then we simply render our application. Easy peasy, right? So let's look at the app, app file here. So we're importing React, and here we have two different applications. Now, depending on who is going to use what, we're, we, we're going to just simply load whichever is required. So what we do is that we clear, create this little app to export or like this component. I mean, this doesn't have to be an app, guys. It can be anything. It can be whatever you export. And we set that to a default function that simply returns null. And then we simply check. All right, where are we? If we are in the US, then we, we want to export app number two. And otherwise, we want to export app. And you can extend this. This is very, as I, you saw in the first example, this is very similar. The difference here is that you're kind of hiding this implementation detail. You're not as upfront about it because this is just happening at low, like uh, this is, it's, it's happening at the import time. In other words, you, as the caller of this, this uh, file, you don't really know what's, co what's coming, going to come in. It's just a different flavor on this kind of the same principle. And then you simply export the application that was required, whichever environment you're in. So these are three different versions. I mean, you can do this in many other ways as well, but these are, I think it's a good start to kind of get you thinking about what you, how you will handle the sort of situation where you have an application where multiple different versions or different features need to be enabled and sometimes they might be a little bit different depending on who is viewing your application because you will very often find yourself in a situation where you have multiple customers and they all want their own features and they want some features but they don't want all they, and some people want those features and some people want those features yada 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 and these are a few examples of how you can start thinking about supporting that sort of thing in your applications have a great day